Hello my friends, and welcome to The Last Flame. This is a game that's been on my radar for a while because it looked really cool and really fun, and it just released, so I thought I'd do a video on it. I've done two runs already, beating the first two difficulties, and really enjoyed myself. This is a roguelike auto-battler that a bunch of people have been calling the best new roguelike of 2024, um, so we're going to see if we can verify if that's true or not. This is an auto-battler, so if you're familiar with Teamfight Tactics or Dota Underlords or the original Dota Auto Chess, then you'll recognize the gameplay. Rather than making tactical decisions during battles, we make compositional and positional decisions about our characters. However, rather than like Teamfight Tactics where you match those up against other players, we're instead playing a roguelike where we match up against increasingly difficult challenges then and evolve our team throughout the run um, on a map that will be very familiar if you've played recent roguelikes ever since Slay the Spire or FTL came out. Let's jump right into it and get going. I'm playing on Ascension mode. I've beaten the first two difficulties in my first two runs, but this or or I'm playing on Adventurer mode, excuse me. But this is typically I find for these games the third difficulty setting is where things really come into play and start being difficult. So let's see how much of a challenge we're in for. I will say Right away, the, the visuals remind me a lot of Teamfight Tactics, um, which I am not a huge fan of Teamfight Tactics sort of visual style. So uh, I'm not like loving the visuals of this game. I think they're, they're good and they're serviceable. You can tell what's happening and that's what really matters. But just my first initial review note. <laughs> All right. So we have a choice of seven heroes here, and we get to pick two of them. We'll grow our team up to five over the course of the run um, as we are playing. And we actually have two heroes that I really like. So basically, we want heroes that have kind of matching abilities here because they will scale well with one another. And what I find is that the hardest heroes to get good ones of are ones that stun, which you really need for the later boss fights, and ones that um, heal. There's no healers and no tanks in this pool, so we're going to have to find one of those later. But we get to take Arya as our DPS. So her thing is that she will gain attack speed as long as she's focusing the same enemy. And... She will fire as her ultimate a stunning arrow that also applies frost. Frost in this game, I believe, just as magic uh, makes magic attacks do more damage. Let me just check the glossary here. I'm still learning the game, of course. Yeah, spell damage is increased. And then Flynn does spell damage based on his mana regen and also casts a stunning ultimate. So with these two, we add a lot of stun to our team. So this is what I'm going to go with. I don't know if this is the right comp, but this is a, a comp that I have enjoyed so far and seems pretty strong to me. So we have two ranged characters. We're looking for a melee character. We're looking for a healer. We're looking for a tank. I'm not going to go over like what every single character does as we play because... Um, there, that's just a lot of reading, but I'll talk about the game mechanics just as we go. All right, so now we pick a relic. This is just a passive bonus for our run. We can research at the shop, which will get us more relics in exchange for trophies, which we get for winning battles. We can use this to double our trophies. That is a very interesting one, kind of a high risk, high reward, or a, a push your luck mechanic, basically. If you're not spending trophies, your characters won't level up, meaning that the longer you can delay that, the better it, it does. We could also take this, which gives us trophies when our heroes die. I don't think I'm going to take that one. And then, yeah, I'm, I actually don't love this initial uh, set of relics, so I think I'm going to go with engineering plans and try to just get more relics using some of our trophies. You can see here we're on a Slay the Spire type map. We've got all the normal nodes, normal encounters, which just give you XP and money uh, and items. Um, harder encounters that give you a little bit more. Elite encounters that give you a relic. Events that give you events. And campfires, which let you upgrade and heal. And shops, which let you do all of those things in exchange for gold. Looking at this route, I'd like to hit the campfires to upgrade my items. I'd like to hit the elites if possible. So I think we're going to go up the left side here and skip these events. I have found so far, and this is just an initial impression, but I've found that events are pretty weak in this game and you'd rather just do fights. 
We've got our first enemy, a big Uzi guy who turns into a slime. I'm not going to bother like positioning my heroes because this is just the intro fight. It, I don't think you can ever lose this fight, no matter what hero comp you pick. Um, we get some money and a trophy. Each trophy is worth 5 XP, so we can level our heroes with them. And we get to pick up another hero. This is great. We found a tank who also cares about Frost. So Ava here has... She's a tank. Um, she gains additional defense for every hero within range of her. So she's good with other melee heroes. And she does a taunt that also deals extra damage based on her defense. So we want to stack her defense really high. Naka here... Um, does damage and is sort of a melee DPS character. We already have a physical damage dealer in Arya, so I don't know if we need Naka. And Ryu can shield himself and take advantage of shields. These characters both seem a little more complicated to use, and Ava kind of goes with our team comp already, I think, so I'm going to grab her. She also wants defense and spell power, so we're going to take an item that's good for Ava here. And then I will take an item that's good for Arya, just some additional attack damage, and we'll put those on the correct heroes. I'm certainly not an expert. I've only done two runs, but I've played a lot of this kind of game, so you can probably get some good ideas of how to win anyways. Uh, this guy will get better over the course of the fight, and so here's the most important mechanic in this game, how you position heroes. When you place a hero down, you can see the enemies will face the nearest hero. But if we put another one equidistant from the unit, so you, she's two away, right? Then the most recently placed one takes the aggro. So I could place my heroes like this to split the aggro between the spider and the uh, archer. What I want to do here, I think, is try to get both of these aggroed to my tank and have my archer shooting their archer so we can kill the dps unit first so we're going to try to position like this i think and there we go we get, did our aoe damage with flynn who has a big burst damage stun and aoe damage and we shot the enemy so feeling good about that so far let's grab some more trophies and recruit another hero i'm still looking for a healer um, and we actually found two healers. I also like Rune a, a lot because he inflicts shock. And shock in this game is one of the debuffs. So frost, burn, shock, bleed, etc. are all debuffs. But they work differently than they do in a lot of similar games. Shock in this game gives enemies or gives your heroes when they hit a, a shocked target a chance to stun and increases the duration of other stuns. Since we have a stunning-based team comp, it's really good to add more shock into our lineup, because it will both make more stuns happen and increase the duration of the stuns. That said, I have found that it's very, very hard to get a good healer in this game, and I think both Elriel and Rose are pretty good healers. Um, Rose also increases our team's spell power, and yeah, just does does a heal. So I think I'm gonna take Rose here, and then we'll grab an item, um, and we can hopefully pick up Rune or another shocking character later. But I I have found that the character that's hardest to get is a healer, uh, in this game. Every attack, 1% chance per burn and bleed to stun. We don't apply burn and bleed, but that is does go with our stunning plan. Crit strike chance, and they get shield received whenever they crit, or shield per summons. All right, none of these do anything with our lineup, so I'm going to actually reroll these. This is our health. We can spend it to reroll items we find. Let's pick up... Ooh, attack damage, spell power, range is increased by a hex, but you lose it. I think that's too hard to keep going. Every two attacks, wear heals for five times the amount of bleed and frost on the enemy. You get extra attack speed um, or extra heal received. Let's just go with the bonus attack speed, and I'm going to combine that with uh, our item on Arya here for damage and attack speed on the same item. These ones with the scroll are recipe items, and you have to combine them with another item in order to make an upgraded item. They don't do anything by themselves. So we're trying to do that. 
And then I wanted to go up the left side, so let's keep doing that. Um, have my tank here, got my healer. Do the enemies have any AoE? Increase their attack speed just to get damage as they attack and deal damage to nearby heroes. So we've got our three ranged guys at the back, that's fine. And then they're all focusing our tank. Um, I could like split aggro here onto one of my other characters, but since we have a healer and a tank, we should probably just uh, have them all focus the tank. Actually, my positioning probably was bad because Ava's passive is... Oh no, within three hex range, so she's still getting her passive bonus when the my guys are behind her even that far. We don't have to have people adjacent to her to give her the defense bonus. Alright, I'm looking, I think, for one more tank. Um, so we found two more healers, no, no specific tanks, but... I have found Korra to be incredible. Um, this this hero seems to be really good for me. She gives shields to uh, herself, which helps keep her alive, and she does a an attack around her that deals damage to enemies and heals allies. Since she's melee, she's going to be up in the grills of all our enemies and surrounded by a bunch of allies. So I have found this to be a really solid character who who does really well. Just scales with defensive stats as well, which is really nice. Um, I guess let's get crit, strike, chance, and damage and put that on our range DPS. And then I don't care about losing some attack speed. We want the mana regen on this guy because his passive scales with mana regen. So Flynn's Astral Staff, we're going to put the mana regen on him. We'll put range DPS on Arya. You can see our stats here. This is basically damage dealt. We can also see more advanced stats. Time spent stunned, damage taken, debuffs inflicted, and so on. The one thing this team comp is still missing is f consistent frost application, so I'm hoping we can find some of that. But I'm pretty happy with this lineup, I would say. We'll put Korra up here. Make sure that all these guys are aggroed onto my tanks. And then pretty happy with this setup. Um, no AoE enemies to worry about. Oh no, this one does, but that's just if our, my guys are clustered, so that's fine. And then I can also use these trophies to level up. Are we going to hit a shop? I am going to hit a shop, so I'm going to save the trophies so I can spend them using our engineering plans to get another relic, I think. And I think we can win this fight without um, too much trouble. Our, our character here has so much additional defense because she just gets a ton from her passive. It, later on in the game, that's not going to be a lot, but right now it's a lot. And so all the healing that we have is really good. I need more mana regen on my two support characters, but I'm feeling pretty good about this build so far. Get some money and some trophies, grab an item. Um, this one gives mana regen for being further away from allies, which is pretty interesting. Every three seconds, all, gain, all enemies gain one of every debuff active on them. So this is basically every three seconds they gain a frost and a shock for us, which is not bad. Or 4% max HP heal on our tank could be really good. Who do I currently have items on? Um, I do have one on, on Ava, so I could put the recuperation necklace on that item. Or, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to do that, just try to stay tanky. So let's forge that with her item, with Ava's Harvester's Shield, to make a Recuperation Necklace Shield. So that should keep her alive more easily. And then we get to choose one of this, these. So I can swap passives between my heroes, re-roll a passive into something else, or recruit a hero and get trophies. Four trophies will be 16, which means I'll be able to buy two relics at the shop. That seems pretty nice. Um, so I'll, I'll recruit a hero who will probably just stay on our bench. Although Zog does apply shock, right? Three shock, one mana regen. 
Okay, this guy's a pretty nice support. He shields our heroes and adds shock. And has native mana regen. Savos is a support who brings summons. We're not really a summon build, so I I'm going to ignore that. And Luko cares about frosts, which we do have a lot of, but... I'm going to take Zog. I don't know if I want to swap anyone out for him currently. But I think he's the most likely to fit into our team comp. So I can spend... I think we get three trophies per fight. So I can spend three trophies to level somebody up. I should probably do that before we fight this elite. So let's level up our DPS here. Um, crit strike for being far away from our allies. Every two attacks, one shock to all enemies. This is incredible. Electric attacks is exactly what we wanted for Arya here, so very happy to see that. And then these guys do damage reduction. This guy steals mana. So let's make sure that our characters are going. Oh, uh, wait, did we not? We can't reposition our guys. Oh, no, I'm still in trophy mode. Okay. So I want two of them hitting her and one hitting Korra. And then everybody else just attacking. This looks pretty good to me. I guess I can... Uh, I'm going to move everyone up to here so that they stay within three tiles of Ava for her passive. So we've got healing happening. She's slowly regenerating. Hasn't died yet, but might this fight. So when a hero dies, we lose some health. Um, so that means that I really need to get her more tanky uh, stuff. But you can see we're starting to really add up the shock there. So that's going to lead to a lot of stuns in the, in the late game. 54. Oh, no, wait. I didn't get any trophies. Okay, I guess I don't get trophies from winning the elite fight. Or maybe I lost them for losing the fight. So we're only going to get one relic. I thought you got three from winning a fight. Maybe you only get them if your hero doesn't die. I could probably check in the guide. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. Let's take... Ooh, Thundering Helm. Very interesting. Or... More damage from healing, or additional mana from attacking. I think let's take this. Just more shocks is really good. And then here we get a relic. All enemies start with 15 frost, but have a cap of 15. 1% attack speed for every money I have. Um, one thing is that attacks, when heroes cast their spells, is based on your... Attacks. So as they attack, the, every time they hit, they gain a mana up to their maximum. When they hit their maximum, they cast a spell. So more attack speeds is also more spell casts. I'm going to take plus 50% heal received, though. That's going to help keep our, our guys alive, I think. And then let me go to this shop. We are going to choose a relic for eight trophies. Um... One spell power for every trophy, so I'd have to hold on to that. I think I'm going to just take shield received. That means that any shielding we do will also be really good. Anything that I want here. So, 80 ethereal damage every attack for minus 50 attack damage. On cast, more ethereal damage. 8 mana regen. So... When the wearer's spell power is equal to or above 70. Flynn has 10 spell power. I could buy a couple spell power items for him. And put the mana staff on him. Get him a lot of mana regen. I would need... Ooh. Where against the default passive of all other heroes on the battlefield? That's a lot of passives. So I could get somebody quick attack. Astral Staff, Defensive Wall, Team Power, Summon Shield. I think giving that to Korra could be really powerful, because she can use all those abilities. So let's buy this, and I'm going to buy the, um, the Guard's Armor to put it on. 
and then probably also spend out on this heavy armor just to have a, a few more stats. And then I will forge, and we will put the Many Faces mask onto the guard's armor to give Korra every passive on my characters. And I'm going to put this shock damage thing onto the heavy armor just for another good defensive item. All right, I like that. Let's now fight this elite. One thing I like about this game is that, while there's a lot of decisions to make, it's um, still pretty fast-paced. And then I think I want this on Ava. All right, so these guys deal damage to nearby enemies and make each other mad when they die. Fair enough. Just going to back these characters up. I want these two aggroed onto her and this one aggroed onto Korra. And then I want all of my characters to be attacking one of them at a time to try to DPS down one enemy. So this looks pretty good to me. So we're gonna we're gonna finish one off. It will enrage all the others, but I'd rather I think just still focus them down one at a time. You can see we're getting a lot of of shocks on the field, which means we are starting to really stun very quickly. Anything I can get that increases the number of debuffs we apply will be really good. A little more money. Pick an item. Attack damage and crit chance. Spell power and HP. Spell power and attack speed. Did I? I didn't take that thing for Flynn, right? Yeah, I didn't take that one item for Flynn. I think I'm going to reroll this again. I think we can do better. I'm looking for mana regen. Um, but I'll just take some more defense and health. And then, yeah, I want, I want more mana regen items for my healers and for Flynn. We'll start by putting this on him. And we'll put this on you. Pick a relic. For every 100 shield done, all heroes gain 5% critical strike chance. 20% attack speed, but lose 25% attack damage. Just applying a bunch of frost. I think I like it just applying a bunch of frost. Um, three frost every four seconds. So that's going to be like six to eight, six to nine frosts every few, every fight, which is pretty good. That's going to be a lot of extra damage. And most of our damage is spell damage, just coming from Flynn. Still. Um, let's go here, and I'm going to turn on this Fragment of Truth. So this lets us fight the secret final boss. It's basically like the heart fragment in Slay the Spire. Um, and we can get this one from a normal or star encounter, and the second one from an elite encounter. I think our team comp is good enough that I want to do that. The question is, do I want to spend some trophies to level up some guys? I think I should. We can spend one trophy to level you up, get another passive. Every crit strike, every four seconds. Um, not a huge fan of these passives. We'll probably try to reroll these or swap them to somebody else. And then I think I am going to level up Flynn here, get him to level two. Every three attacks, one frost to all enemies or additional shields. I think I, I honestly just like quick attacks. Just get him to cast his ultimate more often. And activate the Fragment of Truth. Then I want these units to be... Oops, I accidentally applied a trophy. Oh, that's probably what happened earlier, why I lost trophies. I had it in trophy mode and was, was hitting the, the character with it. And then accidentally applying it. Oops. <laughs> it's not the greatest interface in the world, honestly, but... What can you do? All right, so I've got you aggroed to this one. You and these three aggroed there. This one's aggroed to my healer, but that's okay. As long as just one is aggroed to... Uh, aggroed to a squishy backliner. I did kind of mess up this positioning because Korra is over here not healing the rest of my team. Since her heal is an AoE-based heal. So she's over here not, not helping the rest of the team very much. But that's okay. We beat it even with the debuff and got our first fragment. Get an item. Let me check what items I have to combine those with. So heavy armor, caster's amulet. 
25 shield so I could double up on just slow passive shield gain. Um, every attack, ethereal damage equal to 3x, the frost and burn. Well, I think I'm going to take this ritual axe and put it on um, Arya's weapon. That way she's going to be dealing a lot of extra ethereal damage as well. Ethereal damage is basically just uh, damage that's not physical or not magical. It's not reduced by anything. And I want to re-roll that one passive that we got. The Brawler's Rage on Ava. Because I, I don't think I care about giving her lifesteal. And I could put this on another character, but I think I'm better off just re-rolling it into something else. Uh, just gain 150 shield and gain some crit strike chance. Mostly that's just gain 100 shield. Every third active, you cast your active twice. And this is a mana regen one which we don't have any mana regen on her, right? She has one mana regen, which is one per ten seconds. So, yeah, that will never trigger. Um, I do think just starting with 150 shield is pretty good, though. And do I want to go to a campfire and upgrade one piece of my equipment or fight an elite and get another relic? I think I will fight an elite and get a relic. Just going for the all relics run here. And this will also let me use another Fragment of Truth and get my second one here, because this I need to fight an elite for. These guys stun all heroes for one second, and they can both do that. Steal one gold, um, and they lose attack speed. So we're going to lose a lot of gold here. So I definitely want all of my guys focusing the same enemy. And... These are now both hitting Korra, so let's split their damage. All right, perfect. So we've got them aggroed to two different units, and all my guys are aggroed to one. Starting to stack up Shock and Frost here. Stunned that guy. Yeah, so you can see our, our Shock team comp our shock-based team comp is starting to really take off. It's just stunning the crap out of them. And as we stack the frost on them, they take more damage from our spells. So very happy about that. This mask of, of many faces item is insanely good. Also, it just that just seems busted. Also, if we can get an item that increases our our team size, we get even more passives on her. Um, attack speed and crit chance. I do like that. I think I'll just take the HP though. And attack speed and HP, crit strike and crit damage. We'll just take some spell power. All heroes gain Omni Crit, which lets them crit with spells and heals and stuff, which is kind of nice. Um, now we're just going to take the, the Chalk Orb. I like the regen ticket as well. That will place some tiles on the battlefield that would give us mana regen for standing on them. And we could get more casts from our two casters with that. But... Just more shock is, is what we want. Put the health on our tank and the spell power on our wizard. Take our fragment and go. Deals 775 damage. That's a lot. Split between heroes hit. Okay. And stuns and chains the highest damage dealer of the party. All damage dealt to the boss. Okay, so we just have to deal damage with not our highest damage dealer. That's not terrible for our team comp, because it's going to stun Arya, and then we will be able to blow it up with our casters. She starts off as our highest damage, and then our later, our characters will get better as we go, I think. The, our other characters will get better as we go. I am going to spend two trophies on leveling up um, Korra here, get her a second passive. I guess uh, a... What's that, a sixth passive? One spell power for every 150 max HP. 12 spell power on cast. Her cast speed isn't terrible just because she has all these passives. I don't love this one, but I'll, I'll take transcending power. She can maybe stack up spell power for extra healing for us. And I just, I do want my units clustered here. So let's let's make sure it's aggroed to the the tank. Although I don't actually know. She has 92 defense, 30. Yeah, um, Ava still is is better to tank with because she just has so much defense. Even though she has lower HP. 
So we're already stacking up stuns. Let's get a, a stun cast there. The bosses have some stun resistance, so you need to put a lot of shocks on them before they start getting stunned for appreciable lengths of time. But as we stack our shock up a lot, it's going to start stunning them for uh, for longer and longer. But we're just healing. Th this team comp is really good, I think. We just have so much healing. We're not even losing health. All right, we get six trophies, 50 health back, which is nice. Recruit a new hero, who will also just sit on our bench. Dagon summons creatures. One crystal elemental. Nalua, who deals damage and inflicts a bleed. Burst Nova. I don't think any of these guys are making it onto the battlefield, so uh, I'll take Nalua, I guess. She can do damage for us later if we need to. And Crown of Life, that also seems really good. We can put that on Korra. Aura Around the Wearer. 25% attack speed. Lose 450 HP when the fight starts. That's also pretty nice. 50% attack damage, but their max mana is increased by 50%, meaning it, it max mana is bad, because you just need to get to your max mana to cast a spell. I think I'm going to take this. We'll just keep going with um, more healing. That might be a bad item, I don't know. But it's also one that combines really well just into this guard's armor. I can multiply my money by 1.75 once. I can get extra trophies and heal my flame a little bit. Discounts on the shop or extra attack damage for every floor I visit, as long as I don't go to campfires, I think I'm going to take the juicy mango, just get extra trophies. Try to keep my guys leveled up and buying more uh, more relics at the shops. And then let's forge this onto the guard's armor. So now Korra's HP of 2260, so she's healing 5% of that, which is... I um, have to do some... Some math here. Uh, Five percent of a thousand is fifty, so she's doing about a hundred healing. It's not terrible. Just every six seconds passively. Actually, that seems really good. Also, notice that Flynn is starting to carry us for damage, just because he he does damage based on frost, which we're stacking a lot of. All right, here we go to Act Two. I do want to go to campfires to upgrade my stuff, but I also want to hit up a shop to buy a relic if I can. Can I get both in? I could. It would mean like this left-hand path, only get two elites and hit two shops. I could also just do this. All the way up the left, elite, fight, elite, event, campfire, boss. I think I like that. This gets us a lot of trophies, ideally. Alright, so we've got a Lich. Summons an orb at the furthest corner from the Lich's position, so up there. Um, which is going to deal damage over time, and there's just two Liches. So I guess we just want to make sure all our guys are focusing the, uh, the Liches here. I should move this heavy armor onto... Oh no, it's... yeah, onto one of our... Hang on. Let's do it this way. I think I accidentally moved some items around, but it's okay. Oh, whoops. Okay, I, I really messed up my positioning there. The This lich is aggroed onto our DPS instead of onto our tank. I thought it would be onto the tank, but I guess I placed the DPS afterwards, so... We took a little damage unnecessarily because uh, I messed up the aggro. And this fight's going to take longer now. Enemies do have an enrage timer. So they they will get stronger as the fight takes a long time. But of course we also stack up frost and shock on them. So that part's okay. We get We do heal that back up though and get additional trophies. Oh yeah, I want to prioritize taking fights too. Let's take more regen. And combine that with one of our existing regen items. 
since his ability scales off of mana regen. Okay. So currently we've got you facing you, you and you, and then you're aggroed to Korra, I think. Let's place, yeah, so I've got three onto Ava, one onto Korra, nothing else happening. I think that's fine. And all my guys are aggroed onto the same bat, which is the other important thing. I really want to be focusing down enemies. Rose is, uh, despite having no items or, or anything, doing just, like, great healing and just being generally really good. Just keeping everyone really healthy. Just, I, I, I think this team comp is quite strong. Let's take this and gain extra HP. Oh, wow. Okay, so this basically sets our character on fire based on, on their defense. Um, and we're stacking massive amounts of defense on our tank here. So let's do that. Then she can be a, a major DPS contributor as well. Our healer will get leveled after one more fight, because you get two XP f if you're active during a fight. And anything else I want to upgrade, I think I'm going to... Yeah, we're going to hit a shop in a couple waves, so I think that's okay. Or I got waves in, in a couple tiles. So that's three aggro to you, one aggro to you, everyone else doing well, just staying back. Seems good to me. So sh she should be now doing passive damage constantly surrounding her. Um, and you can see, yeah, her damage is is keeping up pretty well. Even though Korra has everybody's passive, we're still doing more damage with Ava just thanks to that. Uh, I guess it's a Sunfire Cape, basically. For the League of Legends people in the audience. <laughs> All right, and we, we leveled up, get a passive. So, shield, every four attacks, they gain defense or summon. This is a very bad set of abilities for a healer. I guess I'll pick up the shield. Just give her a little bit more survivability. Pick an item here, and I'm looking for mana regen for my healer, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-roll and see if I can get a mana regen item. Yeah, I'll take the, the Book of Mana, I think. And then Spell Power and Mana Regen. Perfect. Let's also re-roll the passive we just got on her, because that was terrible. So we can give her just 150 shield instead of 60 every 5 seconds. Omni crit lets her crit with her heals, but we don't have any crit chance on her. I think, I guess I just want the 150 shield that's going to be better than summon's shield, I think. I don't know if this starts at the beginning of the round or after 5 seconds. I assume you have to wait 5 seconds for the first proc. So I'll, I'll take the critical shield, I guess. Go to the shop, and we are going to buy a relic here. Hextile buffs for lifesteal. I do like that. Um, spell power. Yeah, let's let's do spell power. Or I could take this. Extra shield, extra HP, and HP is consumed before shield, letting you heal that back up. I, I really like that. We have to sacrifice a relic. So is there one that I want to sacrifice? I guess I'll sac... A 45% shield received for 25% plus all of the other bonuses. Because this has what the red tombstone symbol, so you have to sacrifice another relic to get it. Okay, and I can only do the, the buying a relic once per shop. So I can, as long as I keep eight trophies when I'm going into a shop, I can level up my guys. No need to buy any heroes. Let's see if there's any items I want in the legendaries. Not really. 100% attack speed's pretty cool. <laughs> um, inflict Frost. Sh 
shield, an extra defense, just mana regen and HP. Let me check. Do I have... Yeah, I still need more items just for all my guys, basically. So let's just take the mana regen and HP. Oh, I should equip these as well. Um, and then I think I'm going to save my money. Go fight the elite, and let's make sure I've got these equipped. So I'm going to put the wand on you and give the mana regen to you. Spell power, mana regen, mana regen, max HP. Actually, let's swap that around because she has base higher base HP. So now Flynn's got 1320, she's got 1200. Um, that will give them a little more leeway to stay alive. And I think I, I am safe to level up one of my guys. I'm going to level up a tank again, I think. Four trophies to do that. Nothing here that I really want in terms of passives, but I guess um, magic steal on her. Or just attack speed so she casts more often. Let's just do attack speed. And then for trophies, again, let's level up our DPS here. She can definitely just get attack speed. That's what she scales with. And level up the caster as well. I, I, this is kind of an inefficient use of trophies because we're, we're at the point where we're getting those levels anyways. But I just want to make sure I remember to do that. And him, I'll just give spell power. All right. This guy will always attack the hero with the lowest HP. So it's going to go after Rose. No, it's going to go after Arya. That means I want to surround her with... I always... I wish there was a better visual indicator for when you're in the trophy mode. Because it, it glows, but this is very subtle around the outside of the screen. Um, so I want her to be surrounded by other heroes if I can. That way this guy will have to walk all the way around. Actually, if I do it this way, he's going to have to walk all the way around this way to get into attack her. That'll give me a lot of extra uh, time. Just to start stacking some stuns on him and get our heals going. I should have made sure that Korra was next to him to to get the, the healing. I think we'll be good here. Once our, our damage and healing has stacked up a lot, it's easier for us to um, to stay alive even though we had the guy focusing our lowest health unit. Okay, yeah, so this one wouldn't normally have given us a trophy because this was an elite fight, which I guess gives relics and no trophies, but we have this juicy mango, so we're getting a lot more trophies. I like that item more than I was expecting to. This seems really good. Um, this also seems really good. This also seems really good. I'm going to go with Kara's ring, I think. Although we, we only apply two kinds of debuffs, so it's slightly less valuable. Let me go with the Skeleton Shield for for Ava, I think. No, she already has three things combined. Um, let's just go with the Healing Cloak. And who has our highest spell power? Rose does, right? Yeah, so we'll forge that into one of her items. And she can continue to just heal. Pick a relic. 35 defense, ethereal amplification, spell damage, or magic steel. I'll just take the magic steel, just so a little more. Magic steel is just life steal, but for, for spell damage. Um, I'm going to do an event just for fun. I know we should be doing fights, but I, you know, part of the, the video here is just having fun. So... Oh, actually, I'll do this event, because I'm going to go grab the the campfire, I think, and upgrade one of our items. Stone Demon. Heroes in a cone in front of him, so I should probably spread my units out a little bit. Although the, the AoE healing means probably I don't have to care about that. Let's just get him facing this way. I guess I can sort of turn him around while keeping my units grouped. And he heals for that damage. That seems fine. Yeah, Rose's healing AoE is actually really big. 
Like, it, it covers this whole area and heals everybody still, even though they're spread out five tiles. That's really good. I wouldn't mind some way to apply stacks of bleed or burn. That way, my auto attacks would be doing a little more damage. One thing we are a little low on is damage. We've got great healing in this build, but, but more damage would be nice. Um... Attack speed and defense. Who doesn't have items? So Arya needs an item. Korra needs an item. And that's it. Let me go with... HP and defense for Korra. I think attack speed and, and defense, actually. And then... For now, I'll just take the spell's amulet. Put this on Korra. Put this on Arya. Giving her a little defense seems reasonable. It doesn't multiply very well with her low base HP, but um, just anything to keep her alive for the heals from her allies seems good. Night Stalker. Cast Dark Eruption on the furthest enemy, dealing damage split between heroes struck, and they lose 10 spell power and gain 2 max mana. Okay, that could be dangerous. So if he hits all three of my guys, then they get worse at casting spells. But it does split the damage between them. I don't want it to hit just one unit. Um, I think I just want it to hit everybody and just make the damage low. And then he's just got... Yeah, splits damage between nearby heroes. We do lose attack speed. But I think this is fine as long as he's hitting... Ava, I think we'll we'll do okay. Um, let me save some trophies, right? We've got... I could go to this shop if I wanted to not go to the campfire. Alright, so he's debuffing my guys, but we're, we've got our healing field down. The fact that that healing also just lasts, like, is over time is really nice too, because it makes sure everyone stays alive. Really starting to stack up the frost and ice on him. I like seeing these stats. Yeah, we're getting 21 from these frost and shock orbs. I should have maybe taken that ring that, that does that, because this was a 35 second fight. It does one every three seconds, so that would be 10 extra stacks of frost and shock. I should, I should have taken that ring, actually. That added debuffs that it already has. Um, when the wearer spell power is equal to or above 70, they gain 4 mana regen. Do we have, is Flynn equal to or above 70? 20 spell power on Rose. Flynn has no spell power currently. Korra has 100 spell power. Oh, actually, I should maybe be... Oh, it's not showing the spell... No, they, they've, they got debuffed. Um, that's why. <laughs> I think I like the Orcish Bow, maybe? Just extra damage, and we need to forge with... I guess we need to forge with a bunch of the Books of Mana, so let's take the uh, the Mana Staff. I, I'm going to wait to forge until we can see our actual um, spell power, because we got debuffed a bunch. And then our Relic, dealing damage per shock. All heroes gain 7% chance per attack to stun for one second. While we're stacking shock, that seems... Uh, again, incredibly good. Or just heal for 200 every four seconds. Let's let's just let's keep stunning. Uh, I'm going to do the event. I think we could do this and then take the shop, but let's let's have fun and do an event. Safe bet 100. Risky bet 60% chance to win 550. I mean, risky bet obviously. Hey, we won 550. All right, nice. But that's why I think events are pretty weak. Like, that was a pretty marginal effect. And we could have just not gotten an effect. Oh, right, we do want to hit at least one campfire. I forgot I wanted to get a campfire earlier because Origins give you permanent global buffs. So hitting your first campfire to get one of these, and you get one at a campfire, you can swap it for free at another campfire, is really, really powerful. Um, so I, def I definitely should have done that earlier. 
twice the amount of shock, but you lose 10% attack speed. That's very good, I think. That's for summons, we don't care. That we don't really care. Heal for bleeds, we don't care. So I'm, I'm between Concealed, because Mana Regen is really good, and Rune Champion. Doubling our shock. Yeah, th this has got to be ridiculous. I mean, losing 10% attack speed is, is mildly annoying, but still. All right, and so we un upgrade a rare item into an epic item, lose 15 health. That's fine. Let's upgrade our... Smoldering Armor to do more damage, I think. And upgrade a rare item into an epic item. I will upgrade... This one for more chance to shock. Um, does that... Did that work? I don't know if it upgrades the effects from the recipes. Okay, it did. Yeah, 60% chance to inflict shock. Which is doubled, obviously. And then also... Deals damage equal to 120% defense, so huge amount of uh, damage, like more than 100 damage every second. Just coming out from Ava, and that's pure damage. And I wanted to forge an item onto... Let me check everyone's spell power again. Oh, I guess it was listing the right spell power, or it's sort of weirdly glitchy. So this item is... When the wearer's spell power is... Above 70, you get 4 mana regen. I guess I will just put that on Korra's spell amulet. Give her some extra mana regen. Because she's the only one with more than 70 spell power. I could move these items around, but I think that's fine. So she's just going to get 4 mana regen. Cast her spell more often. And let's go to the next boss fight. Here, I want to activate this Fragment of Truth, I think, but let's look at the bosses. So, this guy is... deals damage, and we need to hurt him to stop him from spinning. The big boss is... Crystal of Life gives him healing. That's fine. And these enemies all defend themselves. I think I do still just want to kill the, the weaker enemy units first. Let's also spend some trophies here. So we're going to upgrade Korra, I think. Again, a weird time to upgrade, but it's still good. Let's give her some defense. Upgrade. Who else can I upgrade? Nobody, so I'll save my trophies. You can't place a, a guy within one tile of an enemy, by the way, uh, if you're, you've been wondering about my positioning. So I'm going to do it like this. Yeah, this guy aggro to you, this guy aggro to you, here, here. And then these other two should be aggro to Korra if I do it like so. Meanwhile, we're just killing these two. Alright. And Korra's in the middle of all my units, so her, her healing will apply. And Ava's in the middle of all the units, so her burn is hitting everybody. So the enemies are healing, but we're out healing, outpacing their healing. And they have 150 stun, so I don't think this guy's getting to take a to do anything for the rest of this run. I get to recruit another hero who obviously we're never using, so we'll just pick one at random. Uh, whenever the wearer gets a shield, all other heroes get 25% of that shield. That does seem good. I could put that on... All my tanks have upgraded items already. Um, attack speed. Bone God has to be really good for us, right? And I can forge that with these leather gloves. Perfect. And another relic. Um, I don't... I mean, this is really good. This is more... More shock. But let's take uh, Sift and upgrade who will be a name you recognize if you've watched my Brotato videos. And double up on a relic here. Just keep on stunning. Ooh, I can double a, a sacrifice relic. I didn't know we could do that. 
Um, yeah, let's just do that. Oh, okay, no, I would have to do another sacrifice. Then let's let's just double up on the shock application. Just more shock. Total shock inflicted, 99. Nice. And we're going to forge this onto these gloves. So now every time she attacks, she's getting extra damage and we'll get extra attack speed. On to Act 3. There's three acts, as is pretty standard for this kind of game. Alright, so I do... I, I want to hit combats. I want to hit a um, a shop, at least one shop. A campfire to upgrade my stuff wouldn't be bad. Did I get the fragment? I think I did get the fragment of truth. Is there a way to see that? Yes, I have all three. No, I don't. Oh, I guess it turned off. I thought I clicked it in the last boss fight, so I need to get this from a boss fight, so I'll have to make sure I, I get it from this one. I, I thought I clicked it, but maybe when I moved my heroes or something, it unselected. Um, for this route, I think we want just up the left side, so we'll start here. And I can definitely afford to upgrade some units while still being able to pick up a relic from any shops we get to, so let's upgrade our healer. Let's get her some more stats. Health, spell power, spell power seems good. And five... I don't have enough for a level up, so that's fine. Defensive form. Gains image and we get hit back. And this one just gives itself attack speed. <laughs> I do this every time. Can I get my units to aggro to... Yeah, so I've got this my archer aggroed to the skeleton now. Because ideally I want to kill the skeleton archer and not focus down the the mushroom that has a defensive ability. Although it looks like I'd have been better off just hitting the mushroom anyways with my archer. Currently our tank is doing the most damage because she does ethereal damage just based on her defense, which is very high. That's very funny actually. More mana regen, lose HP and gain shield, gain HP. Let's just do, let's reroll this actually. Because the, the items I'm looking to upgrade are roses to here. Those don't have recipes attached. I think that's it, right? No, I've also got a caster cloak on Flynn and a book of mana on Arya. Did I mess up? I should have attack items. Yes, okay. I, I accidentally swapped the axe onto the wrong hero there. Let's pick up... Reroll this again, I think. Alright, I'm not going to just keep re-rolling, but none of those are good. But yeah, so I accidentally swapped this, which should be on Flynn, for the axe, which should be on Arya. So, my bad. I'm sure people have been yelling about that in the comments. But I did get there eventually. I don't need to change my origin. I think this is the best one, so let's just skip the campfire. Although, upgrading my gear seems good. Eh, yeah, let's upgrade our gear. We'll just do enchant... I will check these. That is a lot of bonus damage, but the bonus stuns just seem way too good. So let's just do enchant. Upgrade. Um, I'll upgrade this one. And enchant again. I will upgrade this one. More healing. Perfect. Repositioning our heroes again. So I want my heroes to all focus the same enemies, but I also want the enemies to focus my tanks. So let's do you here, and then you here, and then everyone else down here. 
And there's no nearby heroes, so I'll, I'll back these guys up. Split between his target and nearby heroes. Okay, so actually, I, I do just want to group everyone up. But make sure they're still aggroed to the right things. So I, I guess I, I misplaced, actually. I wanted to split the aggro between my two tanks, but I've got them all focusing the one tank. It's okay, because they're still all clustered, and also now the enemies are never going to get to act for the rest of this fight. This, uh, this team comp starts to feel pretty cheesy when I'm stacking hundreds of shock on enemies, and they just... Never get to act. Let's take this. Grab an item. We'll take whatever. We're done equipping items, I think. Alright, everyone's got three. Yep. So, I'm just going to speed through the rest of this. Split damage. Furthest hero. That's something that I need to keep in mind. And this one is best targeting. So, let's do... Like so, I think, and make sure our furthest hero is our healer, at least, so that she's taking the damage. Can be intercepted by other heroes. Okay, that that's fine, then. Oh, whoops. Uh, so, my DPS is tanking one of these enemies. The beams are getting intercepted by my tanks, so that part's fine. But... If, you, if we don't die in the, like, beginning of these fights, the enemies just stack up so much stun. And we've got a lot of healing, so... That part's fine. Let's take a look at... Our fight stats, just for fun. So we can see, yeah, 29 seconds of stun from Arya, 43 seconds of stun from Flynn. It's just getting ridiculous. Uh, 3% chance per shock and bleed to gain shield. 1 attack damage and 1 spell power. Who doesn't have an upgraded item? Flynn needs an upgraded item. And... Rose needs 2. <laughs> None of these are good. I guess I'll, I'll do the shield. Reroll passive. Do I want to reroll passive on someone? I guess I'll reroll this uh, this shield passive and see if there's something better. This is a worse shield for her. Yeah, no, we're, we're just keeping the quick early shield. And then I will forge... Um... I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not going to forge these these low-level recipes. We're just going to look for better stuff from the elite fights. All right, so I can spend up to nine trophies to level up, and these guys all do damage to nearby enemies, make everybody else mad. So let's spend some trophies, and we'll try to get another passive on Ava, I think, the tank. Actually, I'm going to see if I can get one on Arya that just gives her health or any kind of... Healing. Yeah, life steal and attack damage, that's really good. Or shield. Let's do let's do critical protection. So she has twenty-two percent crit chance and does good damage. She should be able to uh heal back up. And then I'll save my other four trophies because we can't level up anyone with them anyways. Let's also position for this fight. It's easy to I think it's shift, yeah. Easy to accidentally move items when you're in the item the invisible mode and also the trophy mode. So what I want is for all of these units to aggro onto my guys, but for my guys to be in the same going the same direction. I guess there's not really a good way to do that. So let's just do it this way. Get these two on Korra, these three on Ava, and then hopefully I can DPS down Something. Yeah, we'll DPS down this one. Alright, that's good. A 
Ava should be able to tank pretty well. She's still within three hexes of all my guys, so she's got insanely high defense. And we'll grab this, pick an item here, and none of these items are better than what we've got, I don't think. So I'll just kind of pick at random. But we can grab a relic. Extra damage, crit strike chance. That's not bad. 24% lifesteal. Let's just take extra damage. Then I'm going to go to this shop so I can grab another relic. Crit damage, enemies... No, I do not want to cap enemy frost. All heroes gain spell power. Caps it at 100. This is pretty cool, so I would have to replace... I think I want to replace the troll mace with this, actually. Um, just giving a massive spell power bonus. Uh, we have Omni crit on, on our healer, actually. So let's give her crit damage. That, that'll increase my healing a lot. And then who needs an item upgrade? Still need to upgrade these two, basically. The Book of Mana and the Spell Amulet. I could also buy something better, but... Spell Power on cast, they heal. Every two attacks, they deal damage. Let's just do uh, this. Oh, wait, hang on. On cast, all enemies gain two of every debuff active on them. Amazing. Yes, please. Let's take Kara's amulet, and I'll take the ethereal armor as well. Or just the high mountain ring. And then I'm just going to forge the book of mana and the spell's amulet with those two. Get a bunch of extra cast and regen on everybody. So that should give us a lot more spells. Feeling good about that. Let's go back and proceed. We need the Fragment of Truth still. Let's go here. This enemy splits its damage, so we just want to group everyone up as much as possible. Just a big tough guy. But as long as we don't die right away, we should be able to stun it forever. <laughs> the The thing is, the Enrage timer doesn't really matter. I'm going to actually speed up these last few fights. The Enrage timer doesn't really matter, because even though the enemy's getting stronger, um, I think our, our damage is outpacing its tenacity. Tenacity, I assume, works the same as it does in, in League of Legends, where it reduces stunning. Nothing here that I care about. Although, Amber Sword is pretty cool. Damage in a beam and extra attacks. And yeah, we'll, we'll just speed through this fight. I don't think we're at any risk of losing it, hopefully. I should maybe have positioned so that my tank got into the middle of the enemies. Because how, how Flynn's ability works is it casts around your highest health guy. So it's casting around Korra. Um, so if she's in the middle of all the enemies, we stun everybody. With his ultimate. I think we had one item that can use this. So we'll do that. And then reroll passive. We got the shield protection... Maybe I didn't want to reroll passive, actually. Oh, let's let's grab this, actually. That's going to be better than the 150 starting shield. And I wanted to forge, yeah, forge Flynn's Book of Mana. Actually, I should forge the Caster Cloak and give that to him instead. That's just going to be a little better. And he can gain more mana regen. Uh, 
lost an item somewhere, but that's okay. All right, let's grab another relic, I think, before we fight the, the normal final boss. Then we'll fight the secret final boss. Every 100 shield done, we get crit strike damage. Random hero gains an extra item slot. Minus 2 max mana, but lose 8% attack speed or just extra HP. I'll just take the extra HP. Anything here that I want? All of our items are fully upgraded, so I'm really just not going to worry about these. There might have been something sweet there, but I don't think there's anything worth spending too much attention on. Let's go here. So we've got this big old dragon, the Molten Dragon. Breeze Hellfire dealing 2155 damage split, so we want to group. And Midnight Breath breathes Midnight dealing 500 damage, but heroes hit by it gain 50 attack and 50 spell power. 500 damage is a lot of damage, though, so I think I'm just going to leave my guys out of the 500 damage radius and just group everyone else up. And this looks perfect to me. Do I want to upgrade anybody? We can, yeah, we can upgrade someone. Let's upgrade our tank. Get her another passive. 15% chance to stun. Instant attack, which doesn't generate mana. This, these are not good passives. We'll just take the 15% chance to stun. Obviously, I'd rather have that on a faster attacking unit, but that's still good. And then I need to make sure I've activated the Fragment of Truth and then start the fight. So that increases this guy's attack and damage. Or just, just health. But <laughs> enemy health is just completely irrelevant in these fights because <laughs> they never get to act. I mean, he's got 200 stacks of, of shock on him. My guys have thousands of points of shielding. We're going to have inflicted like 10 solid minutes of stun by the end of this fight. Alright, so that's a win on this difficulty. You, you still get the win um, just for beating the final boss, but we n now can get the secret final boss. Recruit a hero. I don't know why it lets you recruit a hero here. That's fine. We don't care about that. Pick an item. That is pretty cool. Let's grab that. Pick a relic. Shields the hero with the most shield. Give... All enemies start with 15 bleeds. Actually, this is pretty good. This just increases our damage... Our melee attack damage by quite a bit. So bleeds do... Um, every attack, you have a 25% chance to increase your damage by 1.5% per bleed. So that's basically plus 20% damage a quarter of the time. Actually, that's not that good. You need more bleeds than that to, to really matter. Let's just take the shield. Take our third fragment of truth. And go to the, the final encounter, I assume. I lost the last time I tried to fight these two bosses in my last run. So I want this one. It sends an orb at the furthest hero. Explodes when a hero is hit. And deals damage to everybody. So what if I make you the furthest hero? Oh, but then it's going to aggro... Is there a way I can have you... Yeah, so I've got them both aggro to Korra now, but now I can swap this aggro, and then this is the furthest hero. So you're going to hit her. You are going to split between the target and nearby heroes and spawn more units up there, which will aggro to Korra. Is that good, or would I rather just group my guys? I think I'd rather just group my guys. We'll just accept that this one's going to be hitting 500 damage shots on our little Medivh guy over here. <laughs> or actually, let's do it like this. So now you're aggro to you, you're aggro to you. 
There we go. So I, I want them splitting aggro between my two tanks. I want all three of my ranged characters focusing the same one, ideally. And I want my units grouped up so the healing effects go on all of them. But it also looks like they're just not going to get turns. Reduce the effectiveness of stuns by 89 by 90%, but it doesn't matter because all our stuns last for 10 minutes. Well, this, this build uh, really came together, I have to say. That was a nice one. Unlocked a few things, and let's take a look at the fight recap. 23 seconds, 45 seconds, 14 seconds. Yeah, so they, they were stunned for a really long time. Um, tons of shielding. We had a bunch of relics, all of which were giving us big passive bonuses. Really like this team comp. Everyone was pulling their weight, I feel. I think that if you are trying to win this game, my opinion is that this stun comp is very strong. Um... And that Korra is an incredibly powerful character for any comp. She just goes in everything. Uh, I liked Rose a lot as well as a healer. Flynn's stunning is really good. Arya was was okay. I mean, the, the amount of stuns she added were a lot. And we didn't end up with any other attack damage synergy. So she wasn't doing that much damage. But she still did the most damage of anybody. Um, and Ava is just like an amazing tank. Having that much defense is super powerful. Ultimate victory. All right. Well, there we go. And I've unlocked a few things. And I guess, is that the actually the highest difficulty? Other than the challenge modes? No, okay. So there's challenger and then higher difficulty settings. It just didn't show as having been an unlock. All right, well, that was really fun, and uh, let me know if you'd like to see more of this game. I really enjoy it so far. I think it's a really cool little game. Um, just a fun, casual game. Takes about an hour to complete a run, which I like for one of these roguelikes. Um, a little longer, obviously, because I was still learning and talking, but I expect that will go down to about 45 minutes when you get more familiar with the game. And uh, as always, my friends, I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, do, of course, like the video, leave a comment. Both of those things help a ton with the algorithm. And it's especially important if you like a new game that I'm featuring on the channel to do that, because then it can help reach people who are interested in that game. And of course, you can subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Cheers, my friends. I'll catch you next time.